praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for this time. We give him the glory and honor because he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves adoration. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your holy name. There is no other God like you, Lord. A chance of days, beginning and the ending, Alpha and Omega, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for all that you are coming to do. Thank you for coming to teach us about marriage. My Lord and my King, there is no God like you, Lord. I know that there is nothing difficult for you, Lord. I pray for all the marriages that some of them are about to break. Some of them have already broken, Lord. I pray that you put them together because you are the one that can put every pieces back together. My Lord and my God, there is nothing difficult for you, Lord. I pray that you speak through me to your children. You speak through me to the marriages, that the marriages that are, are, are about to break. Will, will, will be mended, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and my King. Whatever is going wrong, whatever the enemy, the devil is doing to break people's marriages because he know if we live a good marriage life to please you, we will make it into your kingdom. But he want to bring confusion in people's marriages that they will not live their life to please you. I stand against every plan that he has concerning marriages right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I Commit uh, every marriage in the Christian dom into your hand, Lord. I pray that everything that the enemy is doing in the marriages will be destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My Lord and my God, according to Hebrew chapter, uh, 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 chapter 12, verse 29, your word has said, you are consuming fire. You are consuming fire. Therefore, I pray that you consume every work of Satan in the marriages of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and my God. Everyone hearing my voice, everyone going to hear my voice later, I pray that all their marriages will receive healing. All their marriages will receive blessings. All their marriages will receive restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and my King, we worship you. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have, I have prayed. Amen. We give you the we give God the glory, we give him the praise. I thank him so much for all that he's doing in my life and in your life. Today I welcome you to Marriage Digest. And today's topic, we are going to take a very important topic: how to choose a marriage partner. How to choose a good marriage partner. That is the topic for today's uh, discussion or the teaching. Uh, I want us to see how marriage has been or how marriage has be be begun. Who instituted marriage and uh, how we can enter marriage or we can choose our partner. So I want us to see something in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 2. I read from verse 18 and verse 21 to 24, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of, 
no, um, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made he a woman and brought her unto the man. 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Amen. According to what we just read, we learned that it was God who instituted marriage. Because when he created Adam, he realized that Adam was alone. Even though he made all kinds of animals to be with him, but there is none like him to, to, to comfort him and to be and help meet for him. So God caused Adam to sleep. A deep sleep fell on him and he took his rib and formed woman out of that rib and brought to Adam. And then Adam was so happy and he said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. That is how marriage began. And it was God himself that instituted marriage. So if we want to have a good marriage partner, we need to go to God and ask for his help to give us the good marriage partner. Because marriage is like an institution that God has instituted. Just like when we go to some, some institution on the earth, like schools or jobs, we will not go and tell the employers or the, the school superintendent that we want to do it this way. The way they instituted and they have their rules before we go, we will take it like that. And do it because we want to get education, to get a good job, or we finish education and we want to get a job. So whatever they have there, we will follow. The same thing, we have to follow whatever rules God has. In, in terms of marriage, we need to follow those rules. If we don't follow those rules, we will have problems. Just like you go to school and then you will tell them you just want to come one day a week. Meanwhile, the, 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 uh, the plan is everybody should go five days a week. You will not get a good result. The same way if you bring what you know into what God has planned and have rules and regulations for the marriage you cannot make it because you can't do it on your own. Many people today, they want to do the marriage they are on their own accord, the way they want it. That is why they cannot be successful in their marriages. We need to take the word of God and apply it in our marriages. And we need always to pray. In our marriages, without prayer and the word of God, you cannot make it in your marriage. Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. You need to keep the word of God in your marriage. That is God. God has to be the third person in your marriage. The word of God must be there. 
and prayer in addition. If not, you will not be successful in your marriage. It cannot work. You will think it's too hard and you will quit. But with God, all things are possible. Before I continue, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Faustina. I was born and raised in Ghana. I know the Lord when I was 14 years of age. Um, how did that happen? First of all, my mother told me a story when I was growing. The story was so interesting. She said when I was born, I was always getting sick. So she didn't understand the reason why I was always getting sick. And she wanted to know, so she went to the sorceress. You know, in a book of Art, chapter 8, verse 9, we learn about Simon the sorcerer who bewitched the whole Samaria with his sorceries. So there are sorcerers everywhere because that's the work of Satan. So my mother also went to uh, one of the sorcerers to know what is actually going on with the only daughter. So they told her about there was a shrine in the family that they used to go to but now they don't go to to see or to sacrifice anymore so the shrine want me to be there or to take me to be there as a point of contact for them to be coming that is why i was getting sick so she asked what can she do for the daughter to leave they told her the rituals and she did them all and then I agree that when I turn 18, she will bring me there to live the rest of my life. So, uh, because the law has planned for my life, when I was uh, 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 14, she, she called me. She said, you are mine. According to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, where it says, before I was formed in my mother's womb, he knows me. And before I was born, he has ordained me. So I, I, I got to know the Lord at that time. How did that happen? Uh, one of my uncles visited from the city and realized that I wasn't going to school. So he asked the reason why I wasn't going to school and then he insisted that they take me to school. And before, when they took me, I, became, I was nine years old before they took me. So I saw that there are other children in the school just like me that I can mingle with. And I was so happy that I have friends now because I was home alone and I have children just like me i was older than most of them anyway but i am i was happy that i have friends and then i got to know about one other friend the best friend that said i will not leave you nor forsake you the lord jesus christ i found him in the school because the school that we have in Ghana, the schools, they all read Bibles. They do Bible reading as a subject. So when you go to school, you will read the Word of God. I believe that is why the enemy did not want me to go to school in the first place. So that I can stay home if I go to school. I will read the Bible I know God, probably leave him. So he, he through my parents, didn't take me to school. But thanks be to God for the life of my uncle who came and insisted that they take me to school. 
So at that point, I know I, I, I started learning how to read. So when I, I learned to read, I started reading the word of God. That is how I found the Lord. And there was a, a teacher also in the school. That is the one that led me, that's, uh, that preached to me about the Lord and led me to Christ. That is how I know the Lord. And I started learning about I started learning about him. So um, at that point, I started reading the word of God also myself. And then they started teaching us about the Lord. We have good news club. They have good news club for those who accepted the Lord. So I also started going. And started learning about the Lord, continue learning. And then uh, not long after that, there was a, a crusade coming to town and they said we have to go as well. So I also attended that crusade. Another crusade, they preach and then they call for altar call. And I went to accept the Lord Jesus Christ again. Because I was so zealous to know him more and more. And during that time, they said, they are going to pray for the sick. Anyone that has sickness any part, on any part of the body should place his hand or her hand there. So I also lay my hands on my hand on my chest because... I had a terrible asthma at that time. So they prayed and they said, everybody should believe that they are, they, they, they are healed. So I also believe that I am healed. And to be honest with you, since that time, I'm talking about 1980 December, I have not been sick asthma again it was gone the lord has touched me that time and the the sickness was gone completely until today i give glory to him without him i am not here so after the crusade three days was over we were we graduated from good news club to scripture union where we were taught about the Lord Jesus continue teaching us about the Lord Jesus and they taught us about the Holy Spirit and I got filled with the Holy Spirit they taught us about giving they taught us about marriage they taught us about all the values of Christianity so I took the marriage uh, part seriously because they said you have to start praying doesn't matter how old you are you have to start praying you don't have to be old to the age of marriage because before you start praying so i started praying and they said also you have to uh, uh, list the qualities you want in your partner so you can pray for those qualities so i also uh, uh, put lists together for myself the qualities I want in a man I wanted to marry in the future. And one thing they uh, they told us as also is that when you are looking for a marriage partner, you need to see how faithful those that that partner is. Or the person is. If the person is faithful to the word of God, that person is going to take you far or is going to lead you in the right way. But if the person is unfaithful, you have to know that person is not a, 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 a believer or is not the one that can take you to heaven. That's a morally weak Christian. That cannot take you 
far because marriage is a long journey. It's a lifetime affair. So you need to enter very well. You need to enter prayerfully and in the word of God before. So I also put those uh, advice into consideration. So um, when I was praying, men, uh, because I was growing, so men came my way, but I just know they were not the right people. So um, I continued praying. And one day, a friend of mine introduced me to one of her friends. So I wanted to know this person more, and then I went to visit him. And that time, because the place is far from where I live, it's a different city. So I went there, and I slept over, and the next day I came home, and I talked to my friend that I went to see the man. And then another time, we both plan to go because it happened that her friend or her fiance also is the man's friend. So we went to visit them together. But when we went at this time, um, something happened. When During that, that, we went and then the next day we will go. So during the night, the man said, he want to sleep with me. And then I said, that is not biblical. He should show me in a Bible where it says you should do that before you go to the altar. He was not able to show me. So I stood firm and I said, it's not going to happen today or tomorrow. And I made up my mind that that is the end of that relationship because that is a morally weak man that cannot take me far. So I made up my mind that's the end of the relationship. And then the next day, we, we came home. On the bus coming with my friend, I talked to her about what happened. And then she said, oh... It is okay. I said, it's okay to do that. She said, yes. I said, no, it's not okay with me because it's not in the Bible. And I asked her, no, she said, before I asked her, she said, as long as you, you, you agree to marry each other, it's okay. I said, it's not okay with me. Because it's not in the Bible. And I asked her, so that's what you've been doing? She said, yes. I said, no, I will not do that. Because I don't want to sin against God. So that is how that went. And we came home. When we came, it's like a uh, few months after that, I turned 26. And then I told myself, if I don't take my prayer for marriage to the next level, it's not going to be well. So I took extra time off work purposely to fast and pray for this issue. I started praying, fasting and praying. Exactly one month, uh, one day, one Sunday, I came from church and I felt like to go and visit one of my girlfriends. That we be we are prayer partners also that we pray all once a week towards our marriage partners, but she happened to meet uh, her own, so uh, it, it's left for me to meet mine. So that time I just felt like I wanted to go and visit her, so I I went. Those days, it's not. There is no. There was no telephone. You just go to your friend. If the friend is there, fine. If it's not there, you just go back home. So I just went there, and she was there. She said, "Oh, I was just thinking about you, and you are here." I said, "What are you thinking about?" 
about me for. She said, I am going to my friend and I, I was thinking if you were here, you would have accompanied me to go. I said, okay, I'm here. We can go. So we went. On the bus, she said, when we get off the bus, the friend of her friend is behind, his house is behind the bus stop. So it's good we go there to make sure that the man is at home before we go there. Because it's a long walk. So we don't want to walk and go there and the man will not be there. So I said, okay. So we went to visit this uh, the friend first to see if the man is there. So uh, as we were, the man said, oh, we they just came from church. He didn't say he would go anywhere. So he will be there. And then he accompanied us to go. So as we were going on the way, something strange happened. I was behind them, but because they know each other already, they were talking, and I was behind them. We were all going. And then my eye just went on the head of the man. And I, I saw that this man was going to be bald in the future. And I told myself, what do this have to do with me? So I tried to brush it off. And then we went to see the man. Finally, we got to the house. And they received us well. We were there a little bit. And then we went home. But as we went home that night, the Lord came to me and he asked me questions. He said, what about that man you saw today if he want to marry you? I said, I don't want to marry that man. The Lord said, why? I said, because I saw that the man is going to have, uh, is going to be bald in the future. And the Lord said, what do that have to do with marriage? And then he took me to a couple in the church. Uh, the man was completely bald and the Lord said as you see them they are a very happy couple and they have children also what do that have to do with marriage so I said to the Lord Lord if this is the man you are giving me to marry then let me be happy with the boldness in future as soon as I said that, it was like something came out of me. And then I was now happy that I met my husband. And the rest of the night, I was just thanking God, praising him, worshiping, and very happy that I met my future marriage partner. So uh, another Another week passed by and my friend alone went there and went through the same process going to the friend at the roadside before going to the man's house. And then as they were going, because he accompanied he had to go there as they were going, and the man asked her that, the, the friend you came last week with, did she marry my friend said no. And then he said, did she have somebody to marry to? She said no. And the next question was, how is her character? So my friend told him how she knew me. And then he said, if her life or her character is like that, I want to marry her. So... When my friend came later, she came to tell me. And then I said, oh, really? And then she also said that they invited us uh, uh, to come to wedding in their church a certain day. So we went there. And then after the wedding, we met. And that is uh, uh, when he proposed to me. And I said that I am going to pray about it. 
but I already know the Lord has already confirmed it. So I, when I went home, I just praised God, thanking him for his goodness, thank him for his faithfulness and his love towards me and mankind. And then I, that's how I met my, my husband. And then after that, marriage took place. Some months later, we got married. Next week, we are going to talk about how we got married. We talk about the courtship and the marriage. Stay tuned with us. Like our page and subscribe our channel for future messages. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.